One of the micronutrients that you may not have applied recently on your farm is boron. That's our topic today. It's probably one of the most misunderstood nutrients out there because everyone yeah. thinks, well, this can kill my crop and it's just going to leach away, so often. why waste my time putting it out there? And besides that, I only need it at pollination time. Right. If you have too much boron, it is going to kill your crop. I agree with that. But you know what? Too much water kills your crop. Too much nitrogen kills your crop. Too much of anything kills your crop. The thing that you may not know is you could probably put several pounds of boron out on your ground if you have good calcium levels and high CEC. So don't get too worried about boron that it's going to hurt anything, but it absolutely can help if you have the right amount. I've talked to a lot of farmers, Brian, that have talked to their fertilizer dealer who said, I won't put a pound of boron out on your ground. It's probably going to kill things. Well, how do you know if you don't try? Now, I'm not suggesting you try to kill all your crop. But what I'm saying is, try out some of these things on a small amount of acres and just see in your area, with your climate, with your soils, what's going to happen. Brian gave you a couple of clues there. Look at where your calcium levels are at in your soil. If you've got adequate calcium, you can handle a lot more things. But if you're short in calcium, uh, then that could create some problems and that would be a more important nutrient to get fixed first. The other thing is high cation exchange capacity soils. What we're talking about here is soils that have good holding capacity. Now, if you've got lots of organic matter and heavy high calcium or high cation exchange capacity soils, you've got potential to hold that boron in place so it isn't all available for your crop at the same time. Now, Darren mentioned earlier that boron is important at pollination. Yes, with almost every crop, it is important in pollination, but it's important all the way through the crop too. Sure, the biggest peak demand might be at pollination, but you've got to have that there in place well in advance in some cases. So what a lot of really high yield farmers are doing is they're supplementing some boron by adding it foliar. The problem with that is it can get really expensive. So one of the ways we've used to cut our costs on our farm is applying dry boron because in our area of the country, we have heavy soils and very little rainfall. In other words, I'm not nearly as worried about leaching it out as I would be if let's say I got 40 or 60 inches of rain in a sandy soil. You just have to vary this depending on where you're at in the country or in the world and what your soil type and your rainfall is. What I'm getting at here is we are putting down a dry boron source in the fall, in the late fall, and we've put as much as four and a half pounds per acre out there on our cation exchange capacities that are 15, 20, 25 with calcium levels of 65 to 80. Haven't had any problem with that. We absolutely have raised our parts per million on the soil test. And on, on our farm, in the DTPA test, we were down to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 parts per million on boron. That's horrible. It's no wonder our tissue analysis was showing deficient, 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 deficient. Well, once we started doing these applications, now we're up in the one to two range, which is pretty good. And ultimately, on our farm, for big time yields, I'm shooting for three parts per million on a DTPA test. Now, this is a broadcast type application that Brian's talking about here. And so often we get questions about banding. Well, what about this? Could I put it in furrow? Could I put it close to my seed? No, you can't. This is where you want to watch out with boron. You don't want to put a whole bunch in close proximity to the seed. That's where if you're putting on a decent amount of boron at the same time, spreading it out in a broadcast really adds to the safety of the product. Once again, we strongly encourage you soil test for boron, do plant tissue analysis for boron and see where you're at. And like Darren said, there's some trial and error to this. No one knows exactly what we should have in the soil or in the plant, but I will tell you boron is important in all crops. You want to have a decent level and to find out exactly what each crop uses in a given year, you can simply go to the Ag PhD fertilizer removal app, pull up your crop and your yield goal, and it will tell you how much in total boron you need. One other thing you absolutely need is to control our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop it later in the show.